I am the Top Gun Maverick of hair loss. That is a fact. So I appreciate this comment that I've received. I appreciate the emotional intelligence of the person who left this comment because they understand we don't focus on the exception to the rules when I share one of my general hair loss rules. We look at the general part of it. We look at if this affects over half the population, the majority, then maybe it applies to us instead of getting caught up in the exception. So immediately, I like this guy, Max Hacker. That's a cool name. All right, so I, we're talking about a video I made called How Soon You Will Go Bald Can Be Predicted on How Soon You Can Grow a Beard. Here's what Max had to say. Quote, hey Nick, I have a question for you. I can grow a beard since I was 16. I'm now 19, almost 20, in five months. But my beard is still not connected, but almost. Does that also apply to your theory that I lose my hair earlier or not? End quote. And by the way, this is not the first comment on this video that I received about that when I had uh, explained about how there undeniably is a connection between how soon you can grow a full beard and the likelihood that you will go bald sooner in life. And the people, those people who are emotionally unintelligent, who can't understand that when I share a general rule, that we don't focus on the exception rule, that I'm not saying that it's 100%, I'm saying this is generally how it works. We can clearly see this with Asian men. When you look at Asian guys, they often barely have much of a beard, maybe, maybe a mustache here, maybe something down here, but generally, Asian men don't have a lot of facial hair, but generally Asian men tend to keep their hair longer in general. So with that being said, as for the rest of us, specifically men of European descent, specifically men who are Middle Eastern, Jewish, specifically men who are Indian from the country of India, for the most of, us, for the, most of the rest of us, what's going to happen is we're going to be more likely to grow better facial hair and, and much quicker in life, but also lose our hair sooner in life. Specifically, when I say sooner in life, really what I'm saying is before age 35. Because if, if you're new to my channel, one of my theories, so again, here's the general rule, and if you focus on the exceptional rule, you're too emotionally intelligent to, to ride this ride kind of thing. But in general, uh, where you are at age 35, it's just, basically do go and determine the rest the second half of your life on how quickly you're going to lose the hair that you still have so for me i'm 38 this is where i'm at i've got diffuse thinning i've got a receding hairline but as far as me just going completely bald anytime soon probably not likely but i'm still going the older i get it's going to get to the point where i probably will just shave it off because it's going to be starting to look patchy and inconsistent so i'm not quite there yet i'm not going to do that at this point but with that being said the concept goes, the sooner you can grow a full beard, it's more likely that you'll be the guy that starts losing hair noticeably before the age of 35, which means you will be balding the rest of your life. So just to be clear, and I've interviewed men on my channel who are in their late 40s and their 50s, and the ones that have perfect heads of hair at that age, they back this up when I interviewed them and said, yeah, I still can't really grow a full beard. And they'd say in their 20s and 30s, they didn't have much hair on their bodies, didn't even barely grow hair under their arms. And that goes back to that, basically the Asian theory, that their DNA, even though they were European descent, they were more like Asian men in that regards. So it's not to say that you have to be Asian to be that way. It's just to say that some men, that's how their DNA is. And that's why I'm always saying it's pointless to look for a cure for hair loss because it's ultimately our DNA. It's already predetermined if we're going to lose our hair. You can arbitrarily, artificially stop it or slow it down to some degree. But ultimately, we're not really curing hair loss here with those, with those perceived solutions. So, the beard. He's saying his isn't quite connected. Now, my whole thing is, if you have a full connected beard by the time you're 18, then you are more likely to be the guy who's noticed to be balding before age 35 or by 35, which determines you'll be probably balding the rest of your life. So according to that comment, my answer is no, this, this hair loss thing is probably not going to attack you before age 35, which pro means you'll probably keep most of your hair the rest of your life after age 35. So let's imagine 
exactly what we're talking about with, with the full beard. And this is convenient that I haven't shaved in a week. <laughs> All right. So just to be clear, let's imagine that you're younger than age 18 and you look in the mirror and you might have this along your jawline and chin and you, and you'd have this, but if it's not quite connected here, maybe, I mean, if there's any part of it that is not connected, so just to be clear, all on the jawline, on the chin, mustache, but then connected. And specifically beyond that, how thick is it? Because it's when I'll see guys in their 20s and I'll, I, I, I'll see their beards and I'm thinking, that's a weak beard. That is a weak beard. I never had a weak beard. I always had a strong beard. As it came in, it pretty much, it was thick hair. And as it grows out, it, it just looks like a, just, it's really thick. <laughs> All right. Some guys have beards that will trick you. Beards that, oh yeah, he has a beard. Mm, it's not a Nick Shell beard though. It's not the kind of beard that Nick could grow by the time he was 18. It's not that kind of beard. So hair along your jawline to your chin, and I know that's not a full beard. Not connected. Not a beard, therefore it does not apply to my theory. So if that is you, you're thinking, and let's just look at the look at the numbers here again that he shared with us. Max Hatcher, he says, uh, so he's 19 at this time, and his beard is still not really connected at this point. Okay, so by default, immediately, I'm going to say, no, Max Hatcher, I do not perceive that you're going to be noticeably really losing any hair before the age of 35, which means you'll probably be able to keep most of your hair most of your life. And granted, speaking of Johnny Cash, he was a guy who uh, I would argue that Norwood too, which is virtually no real hair loss. It's just that his hair line went back a little bit. And he always had that full head of hair, even though his hairline wasn't straight across. He wasn't someone who we would perceive as balding. And he, it always looked like a man who was at least 40 years old. And it wasn't until the final years of his life that he just aggressively just lost everything on top in his last years and that goes back to another theory that maybe I need to do its own video on and that is the concept and this is what I believe that you can almost predict what percentage of men will lose their hair based on what decade of the age they're in so for example or we could even narrow it down to the actual year so for me I'm 38 according to my theory and, and specifically, I'm really focusing on men who are more likely to lose hair. So I'm, I'm basically excluding Asians in this. And, oh, you're racist. No, I'm sure that they would want to be excluded <laughs> for my Asian uh, viewers. Trust me, you want to be excluded in this. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, 38 years old, that means you get 100 other men who are also 38 like me. And what I'm telling you is 38% of those men are going to virtually not have much hair left on top. I mean, they're gonna be not simply just mildly balding like I am, but I mean, specifically, there's just really not much hair on top at all, really, at that point. I mean, we're talking Norwood 5. Not simply Norwood 4, but really Norwood 5 at that point. 38% are gonna be Norwood 5-ish. Maybe, maybe some Norwood 4.5 or whatever in there, but they're the guys at this point, in this day and age, who are basically just shaving their head, otherwise their hair on, on the horseshoe is just too thick, right? I'm gonna say, that's what's normal. And for me, what I perceive of the guys my age, that like, I don't know, anywhere that I'm walking around and I see guys my age, like my kids' school, when I see other dads, that's basically how it is. There's, there's roughly a third or so that have lost the, a good amount of majority on their head. They're, by default, we're gonna say that they're bald, even if they have, can grow some up there. It's not quite the same as it's still being able to pull off any kind of hairstyle other than just basically buzzing it off, okay? But that means still the majority of men still have at least enough hair to pull this off. And if not better hair than, than I have at age 38. So you can see where I'm going with this. We can do this at any age. We can say, we can say age 50. Age 50, at least half men don't, can't grow hair anymore. We can go all the way up to age, let's go 75. Age 75, that's about as long as most men live these days in America. And so let's go with the, about the typical lifespan. A 75 year old man, that means 
that still a quarter of the men that age are still going to have most of their hair. But, but 75% are not going to. And I think Johnny Cash, which I did not plan this, it just happened to be wearing their shirt, but Johnny Cash was the guy that would fall in that category. As he was way up in years when he finally passed away, then, even though he kept his hair most of his life, he suddenly lost it all. Uh, Gene Wilder, uh, the Jewish actor, comedian, Willy Wonka, he also was in that category. He, I think, really, he was about a Norway too most of his life. But in his older years, it just all went away. So I think it's important that we talk about this, basically, age and percentage hair loss. And we keep that in mind, too. Because even if, right now, you're 20 years old, and you... Well, and let's, let's just talk about Max Hatcher. I'm going to predict your life, Max. And you can look back on this video for the rest of your life. So right now, you're, you're 19 right now. So what, you were born in 2000? 19. Oh, but you'll be 20 in five months, which is still... Okay, so maybe you're born... Okay. Either way, whatever year you were born in, I'm an English major. I don't do math. So uh, for you, what I'll predict is I think you're going to have basically a full head of hair. Maybe by the time you're in your 70s, you'll start losing your hair. Maybe in your 60s, it'll start thinning out a little bit. But it's, by that point, your hair is going to be white anyway, which is another one of my hair loss theories. And that is that men who tend to have more aggressive hair loss, and it's hard to tell because I'm kind of right there in the middle of these. But ultimately, I guess by default, I'm falling on the balding side of this theory. I have observed that men who have more aggressive hair loss, see that? Men who have more aggressive hair loss are ultimately the guys who don't really have to worry about gray hair. And I haven't pulled, a, I mean, there's some in there if you look carefully, but I haven't plucked gray hairs. I, I can't remember the last time I did that. I mean, they're in there sometimes, but just not an issue. I don't, I mean, beards are different. You, beards are pretty much going to go gray. Early, mid thirties, it's going to start showing up. It'll start out as platinum blonde for me and then red, or was it? It turned red first, then platinum blonde, then it turned turned white. That's universal for men. But as far as hair, I have observed that men who are going to be more on the hair loss side of things, along with the full beard side of things, are the same guys who typically don't have to worry about their hair going gray that soon in life. But the guys who do have the perfect heads of hair with no hair loss, who can barely grow HR. Those guys, they typically will start showing gray hair earlier in life. Like maybe even their teenage years, their 20s, and definitely by their 30s. So for me at age 38, if I was the kind of guy who had this perfect head of hair, I would have a lot of gray hair by now and maybe I'd even be dyeing my hair. But I've never, never dyed my hair. I've never needed to dye my hair. I just don't really have any issues with, with gray hair. So there are several general things that I have figured out in being the uh, the guy who has over 2,700 videos about hair loss, the, the living legend of hair loss, that's me, Nick Shell. And I have been able to figure out these things. So I'm so glad you left a comment that helps a lot of other people learn about these general theories that no one else in the universe talks about. I invented and created these theories. I'm the only one who has been talking about these things for years. And I'm just a regular guy. I'm not any kind of doctor or scientist or anything like that. I'm just an observer. So, thank you so much for all that you learned today. Leave your comments below. And remember, if you have a low emotional intelligence level, what's going to happen is you're going to leave angry comments in all caps and say you're, they're, they're as the contraction, you are, but they're going to spell it as your possessive, possessive, Y-O-U-R. They're going to be angry, all caps, and talk about all these exceptions to the rule. They're only flagging themselves as emotionally unintelligent because they can only look at the exception because they want to prove somebody wrong. They think that by proving someone wrong, they can gain respect. In reality, when you attempt to prove someone wrong, whether you do or not are successful in that, you actually do not get the respect as a backfire effect. Your comments belong right here.